In this video, we'll solve two-step equations with rational numbers. To start, let's make sure we know the different parts of the equation. First, a variable is a quantity represented by a letter. If you look at the two example equations, the variable in the first equation is c, and the variable in the second equation is x. The coefficient is the number being multiplied by the variable. In the first equation, the coefficient is negative 5. In the second equation, the coefficient is 1 half. A constant is a fixed term, which means that it doesn't change. And it is also a term without a variable. So the constant in the first equation is 16 and 2 tenths. In the second equation, the constant is 8. When we're solving two-step equations, our goal is to find the value for the variable that makes the equation true. To do that, we need to isolate the variable, or in other words, get it by itself. And so to remove the other terms with the variable, you'll start with your constant. You want to remove constant terms by using addition or subtraction. Next, you'll remove the coefficient using multiplication or division. Now since we're going to be working with rational numbers, including fractions and decimals, I want to remind us that dividing by a fraction is the same as multiplying by its reciprocal. And we'll talk about that more in our first example. And just keep in mind what you do to one side, always do to the other to keep things balanced and equal. So let's start with some examples. The first equation says 1 half x minus 8 equals 12. So we want to remove the constant term 8 first, and since it's being subtracted, we will cancel it through the inverse operation of addition. So it cancels from the left, and we have 1 half x equals 20. Now we can remove the coefficient. 1 half is being multiplied by x, so the opposite of multiplying, or inverse, is dividing. We're going to divide both sides by 1 half. So we just said that multiplying, or I'm sorry, dividing by a fraction is the same as multiplying by its reciprocal, which is again just a fancy way of saying we're going to switch the numerator and the denominator. So 1 half would become 2 over 1, which is just the whole number 2. So we have x equals 20 times 2, which is 40. So you can always check your answer by substituting it back in for the variable. So let's check to see if we're correct. We want to see if 1 half times 40 minus 8 is actually 12. So let's work through 1 half of 40 is 20. And copy down the rest. And now 20 minus 8 is 12. So we know that we are correct. 12 equals 12. That's true. So in this first equation, x equals 40. Awesome. Pause the video and try the example on the right. 3 plus 3 fourths x equals 24. So start by removing the constant term by subtracting 3 from both sides. It cancels on the left, and we have 3 fourths x equals 21. 3 fourths is being multiplied by x, so let's divide by 3 fourths on both sides. Okay, so again, we want to rewrite this as multiplying by the reciprocal, which will become 4 thirds. So I'm going to write 21 as a fraction also by just putting it over 1 because it's a whole number. So 21 times 4 thirds. We can cross cancel here since 21 and 3 can both be divided by 3. So 3 divided by 3 is 1 and 21 divided by 3 is 7. So let's multiply our numerator. 7 times 4 is 28. 1 times 1 is 1. Okay, so a little messy here, but 28 over 1 is just 28. So that's what we got for our solution, but let's check it by plugging it back in for x to make sure that we're right. So is 3 plus 3 fourths of 28 actually equal to 24? Well, we need to multiply 3 fourths times 28 first, so I'm going to do that over here where I have a little space. Again, I like to cross cancel when I can to make the numbers smaller. So 4 divided by 4 is 1, 28 divided by 4 is 7. 
3 times 7 is 21 over 1. So that's going to be 21. So 3 plus 21 is 24. This is true. 24 equals 24. So we are correct. Let's do two more examples before some real world problems. So here, r divided by negative 40 minus 2 and 5 tenths equals negative 2. Let's get rid of the constant term first. So instead of subtracting 2.5, we'll cancel it by adding 2 and 5 tenths. So this cancels on the left, so we're left with r divided by negative 40 is equal negative 2 plus 2 and 5 tenths is positive 5 tenths. R is being divided by negative 40, so let's multiply or do the inverse, multiplying by negative 40 on both sides. So here this will just cancel to 1R and 5 tenths times negative 40 is negative 20. Okay, pause the video and try the example on the right. Negative 6 plus 2 fifths C equals 24. The constant is negative 6. Let's remove it from the left by doing the inverse of adding 6. Here it cancels and we have 2 fifths C is equal to 30. 2 fifths is being multiplied by C, so we need to divide both sides by 2 fifths. So it cancels from the left. I'm going to rewrite 30 as a fraction by writing 30 over 1, and I'm going to multiply by the reciprocal, so 5 halves. I can cross cancel if I want, since these are both even, so 2 divided by 2 is 1, 30 divided by 2 is 15. I'm running out of space here, but if I multiply my numerators, 15 times 5 is 75, 1 times 1 is 1, so we know that C equals 75. Okay, let's apply this to some real world situations. This tells us that Rachel owes her parents $25 plus one-fifth of the amount in her savings account. If Rachel owes her parents a total and highlight some words we just read, of $43, write and solve an equation to find A, the current amount in her savings account. So let's write what we are looking for. They told us we're trying to find A, which represents the amount in her savings account. Okay, we also know she owes her parents a total of $43, and that's made up of this $25 plus the one-fifth of the amount in savings. Okay, so let's write what she has here. She owes $25 plus, how do we show one-fifth of the amount in savings? Well, of typically means to multiply. So one-fifth of the amount in savings, which we know is A. We know that all together she owes a total of $43. So here's our two-step equation. We can start isolating A by removing the constant term, subtract 25 from both sides. So now we know 1 fifth A equals 18. Now let's get A by itself by dividing by 1 fifth. Okay. I'm going to rewrite this as multiplying by the reciprocal since the numerator was 1, and now this is going to just be 5 over 1, which is the whole number 5. Okay, so A equals 18 times 5, which is $90. Okay, and you always want to go back and ask if your answer is reasonable. Would it make sense that she has $90 in her savings account? If a fifth of that is what she owes her parents, plus the $25, which would get us to $43. So always go back, plug it in, make sure it is a reasonable number. Now pause the video and try this one yourself. Drew purchased a large popcorn for $5.75 and four medium drinks at the movie theater. 
If Drew spent a total of $20.75, write and solve an equation to find D, the cost of each drink. So again, make sure you define your variable. What we're looking for is the cost of a drink. Okay, we know that Drew bought a large popcorn for $5.75, so let's start there. And four medium drinks, so that's going to add to his cost. And how would I show four medium drinks? Well, if I know that D represents one drink, let's just give it the coefficient four, multiply it by four. So we bought popcorn and four drinks, and he spent a total of $20.75. So here's our equation. Let's solve for D by first removing this constant term of $5.75. Okay, so it cancels from the left. So we now have 4D equals $15. Now 4 is being multiplied by D. So let's isolate D by dividing both sides by 4. And so D equals 15 over 4, but we don't want to leave it as a fraction since we're talking about money. So if we divide 15 by 4, we get $3.75. All right? And again, think about if your answer is reasonable, that the drink is, you know, we could estimate and say, well, that's about $4. If we go back and plug that into the situation, four drinks at about $4 is $16 on drinks. Plus, you know, about $6 for the popcorn, that would be a little over $20 or $22, which is about right. So it's reasonable. You could actually plug this value back in for D to check your work. Well, great job. You just solved two-step equations with rational numbers. There are going to be some extra practice problems on these next two slides if you want to pause them just to get a little bit more practice. But you did great. Way to go.